Here we go, guys. The stage is set. And the okay, Rundle Valley High School is set for the drama. We're going to introduce the finalists now. 2019 Santa Cruz Coast Athletic League Wrestling Championships. The prelims and the semis the are in the books, pounds. leaving That's only two stellar athletes in each of the work classes to go head to head tonight, vying for the prestigious title of league champ. I'm Rusty Reed, and I have the pleasure of honoring you tonight with Reggie Roberts, who is no stranger to this scene, being a part of uh, the league here in the Russell. wrestling as a head coach for 20 years. Hello, Reggie. Great to have you along, and uh, with all the success you've had in these folks, uh, Solomon it's Thompson. nice to have you here to give us the nuts and bolts that we're going to see at center stage. Well, it's an honor to be here with you, Rusty. Um, it's not just Friday night, but there's an electricity in the air tonight. There's a, a definite atmosphere. There seems to be a changing in the guard of Aptos, kind of um, losing ground, I think, in the tournament early in the first uh, first day of competition and the only day of competition here to to Santa Cruz, an uprising team. We had the 40 to 45 people on the team. A tremendous job by head coach Emiliano Aragon. But... This is about the test. The, the wrestlers themselves have been going at it since November, um, and this is down to the final night. Some of these guys are going to go on to CCS for the section championships. A few of them hope to live the dream to find their road to the California State Championships. And for some of the others that you're not going to see here that competed earlier, well, it's golf season early. 145 pounds. Cooper Tate. Well, I, tonight we, we're actually seeing one of the closer uh, league championship finals in terms of the team scoring. Coming into the finals, Santa Cruz is holding on to a lead of 169 to 156 over Aptos. It's a difference of 13 points. That's not a big margin considering the fact that there are equal numbers of Santa Cruz wrestlers and Aptos guys in the finals. So anything can happen. And maybe Aptos can catch Santa Cruz. We just don't know. I do know this. Aptos has won this tournament for nine consecutive years. And Santa Cruz beat them in the dual meet earlier in the year, 40 to 39. They're looking for the clean sweep. They're not looking for the share. They're looking to take home all the marbles, Rusty. Top of that heat for about a decade, and finally Santa Cruz could finally crack through. So that's At 220 pounds, Daniel the Taco King Felix. Absolutely, and in fact, some of the matchups we're going to see tonight are going to be those Santa Cruz versus Aptos bouts. Um, we've also seen a, an increase in numbers out of SoCal this year. They've jumped normally in the kind of in the bottom of the pack the last few years. They really ratcheted up this year and improved their team. They took coming into third place coming into the finals, followed by Scotts Valley, SLV, and Harbor. I'd like to congratulate all the eight finalists. Young man, stay out with us. And I'd like to congratulate all the finalists. On to a bigger and better world, and um, this night is an honor, and that's the t shirt that we here, um, have with his likeness on it, a former Olympian. Most of you know that we lost. Here we are. A very dear now. friend in Pat Lowell about a month and a half ago. I want to dedicate the finals to Pat Lowell. Uh, I hope you all buy a shirt. It'll be the only one. It'll never be matched. Pat was a great husband, a great father, a great grandfather. But most of all, he was a mentor and a great friend to all of us. We are all better off people for knowing him. So I'd like to take a moment of silence for this. Thank you.
wonderful person. One of the one of the most uh, influential men that I've ever met in my life. Um, Pat was a dear friend. Um, He's very supportive of the wrestling here in the community. This is his vision to have this tournament every year broadcast on TV and CTV. Want to say thank you for helping to keep that vision alive. Um, <coughs> Pat loves wrestling. He loves the community, and we love him, and we'll miss him dearly. And I, I'm just going to do my best to. Uh, keep that tradition alive in Pat's honor, uh, being a dear friend of mine. Uh, and I want to say thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for everything you've done for me, Pat. To Pat Level, this night's for you, my friend. Well, on to wrestling. We have 14 weight classes going at it tonight. And uh, here I thought the, the very first one at 106 pounds was going to be one of the most competitive of the night with uh, Alexis Zacharias going at it, who's uh, highly ranked in CCS is number three at that weight. And, uh, uh, but actually, he's got a pass. Explain this. Yeah, un unfortunately, um, the opponent that would have normally faced Alex in the finals, Russell Combs from Santa Cruz, has bumped up a weight class. Um, most likely because of the uh, one-sided decision that took place in their dual meet. Um, Alex had his way with Russell. I think they were looking to, to make sure that Russell gets his due and uh, going up a weight class. Alex is an interesting story. He is the brother. He is the youngest brother of a long history of Zacharias. Uh, sons of assistant coach Ramon Zacharias, Gio, a former CCS finalist and state qualifier. Um, Ramon, 100 career victories, a three-time league champion. Uh, the Zacharias family, very, very in tune with the sport of wrestling. So with Alex, moving on to CCS, and the words ranked third, so he can medal and move on to state. Now we move on to the 113 pounders. It's the aforementioned Russell Palms against Solomon Palms. Sal is an interesting story. This is his probably his, not a lot of action on the varsity level and somehow uh, was able to capitalize today and meet, be in the finals. Russell has got a 15-7 and seven record on the season. He's ranked 15th in CCS. He placed uh, eighth at the Pat Lovell tournament, which is a very, very tough tournament, and took second. Uh, at the Jim Root Tournament. And Russell also ranked in CCS, number 15. Thank you, Impressive. At 106 pounds. In fact, uh, he's uh, been in the uh, finals here in the league championship uh, the last two years in a row. This is third year in a row. He was in the finals as a freshman and a sophomore, and now he's, here he is as a junior. He's a, he's a good leg rider. Right now he's trying to keep Sal Pons down. Sal does a nice job, and there's one point escape. Good, good work on Sal Ponce, who is really an inexperienced wrestler at this point, has given Russell everything that he can go for. Uh, <clears throat> Aptos is in the, what you would call the Army fatigue colors with blue and black trim. And Santa Cruz, obviously, is since the Cardinals are Cardinal red and gray. Again, Sal is a, a pretty inexperienced wrestler, so for him to be in the finals, this is a, a highlight probably of his season. Ooh, that's kind of a, could have been a, a, a nice slam call there. And Sal is in the uh, team. He's in, Combs has got him in a predicament right now, and referee Nate Urbancic is calling for three near fall and a potentially dangerous move, which he's probably a half, illegal half Nelson. We've got a score of nine to three right now with 13 seconds left on the clock. Russell Combs in a pretty good lead right now. Combs in the orange, Santa Cruz red. Trying to bring him back down to the mat. Sal's trying to keep his head up off the mat. And that's the end of the first period. It's a good first period for Combs, Rusty.
Well, he, uh, he's no stranger to this. It's the third year in, in the finals. No stranger to you. You've, been, uh, you've coached that young man. That was, finals uh, as a freshman. Well, that was, uh, that was Russell. We've been going against him, unfortunately. Um, oh, and, yes. Uh, yes, so the choice was given to Santa Cruz, and they deferred the choice to Aptos. Aptos chose neutral position. Comms again, sticking with that tight ride, <clears throat> looking for a cradle. Oh, that's a dangerous spot, Russ. Sal steps over, and there's two reversal. Yeah, if you lock in that cradle and you're gonna take your body all the way to one direction, it's you gotta make sure that that body's tight. Didn't really have control of Sal to be able to pull that off. We'll see what kind of ride Ponce has in mind here. He's looking for a half Nelson, gets way out front. Still in control. Ponce of Aptos, six and four on the year. He also took fourth at Overfelt this season. Got a stop in the action. Um, <clears throat> Ponce is into graphic design, Rusty, and he loves to walk his dog. <laughs> Which is admirable. <laughs> Everybody loves to walk the dog. He's really good with the yo yo. That's, that's, Hey, maybe that's why he's able to stay up with comms right now, because he's used to chasing his dog. And it looks like uh, he's, he's got some skills in, in that department of going after things. Comms looking for a stand-up escape. Trying to free that lock that, Palms, that Ponce has on him. Looks like we're going to get a penalty here for locking hands. 30 seconds gone, second period, second three. One point penalty is correct. So we've got a 10-5 score. Illegal locking of the hands by Ponce. <laughs> Again, Ponce in the Army. He calls Coaches for Russell Combs of Santa Cruz, Emilio, uh, Emiliano Aragon and Cody Kiff. They've done a fantastic job at resurrecting the Santa Cruz program and putting them in, in position to win their first league title as a team in over 10 years. And as you mentioned in the open, it's Santa Cruz and Aptos, so that's huge in the, uh, for the team. The snack will be closing in about 10 minutes, so if you guys want something. Absolutely. It looks like Russell can't, uh, Sal can't seem to keep those hands from locking, but that's a tribute to Russell Combs ability to try and sit out. Every time he sits out, it seems like Ponce is just locking his hands. So we've got another penalty point, Rusty. Four seconds left in the second period. We're up to 11-5 score. My guess is that Russ is gonna try a, a sit out again. We're in the third period now. Russell, Russell comes with a nice low shot for a takedown. It's 13 to five. Russ's hobbies is he likes to hang out with super, super cool mom. So, uh, yeah, so apparently uh, Russ is the number one fan of his mom. And you know, I, I think all moms uh, should have their, a VIP club, boy. The caution for stalling on comms by referee Nathan Urbancic, a former coach at SLV in SoCal for many, many years. Nate's been a staple here as a referee for, for a long time here in the SECAL. Comms holding on to the lead. 13 to 5, with just over a minute to go in this bout. Santa Cruz could walk away, and looks like they'll walk away short of a pin of uh, the first victory team battle. Yeah, this will definitely increase their lead. 
This is something that I'm sure is very pleasing to the coaching staff of Santa Cruz right now. Sal is uh, of Aptos is trying to get that head off the mat, trying to get that that power to lock that Calms has on his neck, trying to sink that half Nelson. He's on the opposite side, and that that might open up a, a door for for Sal Ponce. But it seems like Russell Combs is doing just overpowering him at this point. He's a pretty big 106 pounder. And he's escaped. One point escape for Aptos. Followed by a nice double leg takedown by Combs, increasing his lead to 15 to 6. And we're down to about 20 ticks left on the clock. So Combs and Santa Cruz in command. Wrestling at 13 pounds. Holmes uh, spent most of the year at 106. And again, ranked in CCS in the top 20. Seven seconds to go in the match. Ponce is tempting a stand up escape even down to the last second. And that does it. We've got a new league champion here at 113, Rusty. And Great job. Stepping up out of the 106 and not having to go against Alex. Great job, both wrestlers. Uh, great effort provided by Ponce of Aptos being so inexperienced. Combs did what he had to do, get the job done. But so we're over at 120 pounds now, Rusty. And we've got Liam Patel of Santa Cruz, coached by Emiliano Aragon and Cody Kiffin. It's another Aptos Santa Cruz matchup against Eli Galster. He's coached by Rudy Guzman, Pete Maestas, and Miguel Barranco. Galster's a senior, <coughs> Patel's a sophomore. And look at this. We've got Eli Galster with an immediate pin. That was over quickly. Wow, so Galster. Galster of Aptos is a new league champion. Boy, a pin and Was that expected? Um, you know, I know, don't know too much about the Patel guy, but Eli's been wrestling for four years. He was a finalist last year in the league championships. He is one of the nicest gentlemen you'll ever meet. Great family, um, just a real hard worker. And so, uh, you know, I know his parents have got to be very pleased and proud of him right now. If anybody deserves well, the accolades right now, Eli Galster's the type of guy who does. We've got another matchup of Aptos versus Santa Cruz. <clears throat> so right now, hey, Rusty, we're 1-1. The score is 1-1 in bouts. So uh, it's, things are starting to heat up here. We've got Bobby Gear of Santa Cruz, uh, who is at 126. He's 10-4 on the year. You know, he's going to be taking on Tommy Victory, a freshman. A freshman for Aptos, in the, dressed in the black. Santa Cruz in the in the red. We go. Got a two point takedown for Gear of Santa Cruz. Gear is ten and four on the year. He's not ranked. He took uh, first at Don Bosco, eighth at Weber Lawson, and uh, Tommy Victory is just new on the scene. He's seven and five on the year as a freshman, but found his way into the lineup. He's doing a pretty impressive job here to get to the league finals. That is impressive. In victory in the black singlet. Only a freshman. Less than a tough weight. 126 pounds. Nice. Gear only a freshman as well. Just noticed that. Just noticed that. So the battle, these guys may end up seeing each other quite frequently over the next four years. He's got a nice turn. Gear puts Tommy Victory on his back. He's got a near fall situation here, and there it goes. <laughs> so we're up to two to one now. Santa Cruz 
Tommy Victory with a, a nice effort there. But Bobby Gear is our new 2019 league champion at 126 pounds. Hey, the first weight class, Rusty, that doesn't have Aptos or Santa Cruz. Oh, I'm sorry for uh, Aptos Santa Cruz matchup. We've got a Scotts Valley versus Aptos matchup. 132 pounds. It's Tyler France and Christian Montoya. France is a freshman, coached by Freddie Cortez and Ryan France. It's 29 and 4 on the year. Wow, I see why. She's also ranked third in the girls' CCS right now. 29 and 4, an impressive record. Christian Montoya is a sophomore, and Christian actually has been injured most of the season. He's 9 and 4 on the year. And he had a nice attempt at a takedown there, and he scores the two after all. Montoya took third at the Ed Farrell tournament and sixth at Don Bosco. Military style singlet. Riding a nice wrist lock right here on, on France. France of Scotts Valley, only a freshman here in the final. That's a gal to boot. I'm probably the only girl, I believe, uh, wrestling tonight in the finals. Um, I believe so. I believe so. And that, i got to be honest, that's pretty impressive. Third in CCS rank right now, and she's a freshman, a 29 and 4 record. That's outstanding. Outstanding. Out of bounds. Christian Montoya has been wrestling for a while. He, he wrestles uh, over at the, uh, the Gold Wrestling Club over in Watsonville with Coach Gary Garcia. Um, he's a uh, Santa Cruz Gold. He loves his girlfriend. He wants everyone to know, by the way. He's got a nice chicken wing. Looking for a half Nelson. 30 seconds to go in the first period. Again, three periods. France, France is trying to free that lock, trying to get back to her base. Christian's just a little too strong in this position right now. Choice went to Aptos. They deferred to Scotts Valley. Scotts Valley chose neutral position. 2 nothing Montoya of Aptos. Looking for, looked like a, a dump there. Got caught up and Montoya puts France on her back. He's getting some back points right now. Seen to position his body well, almost as if he was anticipating that type of technique from Tyler France. These two, I believe, have met prior uh, in the senior night at Aptos, if I remember correctly. We had three near fall there. Oh, nice half Nelson by Christian Montoya. Tyler France, and there's a fall. Second period. Well, that was a wild period. Yeah, and you, you can tell if you look at the physique on Tyler France and being a freshman, um, my guess is that she's going to do some real damage next week in the girls' CCS tournament. So, coming up now at 138 pounds, we've got a family affair. The referee, Nathan Urbancic, has stepped off the mat because his nephew has stepped on it. <laughs> We've got 138 pounds, Connor Urbancic, a sophomore from SLV, coached by longtime legendary coach Ken Palestrini, Dan Urbancic, and Brad Swan, and Colin Miller. Connor Urbancic in the, I don't know what you call it, red and black zebra looking colors, um, is 18 and 11 on the year. He's facing uh, Kevin Chavez, 
Vasquez of Santa Cruz, who's 14 and six. Chavez Vasquez, a sophomore junior at Santa Cruz High. Going to Bansett, a sophomore. Stalemate position, nobody's scoring off that position. The referee stops the action. Nice double leg by Urbancic, but a nice counter. Oh, and he gives it up. Chavez with Vasquez tried to do a freestyle flip. Didn't work. Urbancic is now controlling the chicken wing, looking for a bar arm. He's going to try and run that out to the head. And Chavez looks like a pretty powerful guy. It doesn't look like this is a, a type of technique that's going to work too su successfully on him. 2-0 right now, 56 seconds left in the first period. Chavez comes in at a record of 14 and 6 on the year. Nice sit out by Chavez, but he's got to pick the direction to go. Urbancic trying to chin him back, loses control. Both wrestlers continuing to move. Referee sees Urbancic still in control of this situation, yet they're both kind of in a neutral position. Then we got a separation right there and one point escape. Two to one. One point escape for Chavez Vasquez of Santa Cruz. Little arm spin by Chavez Vasquez. They're back up to their feet. Under 20 seconds to go in the first period. Good tight match. Yeah, these guys look pretty even. Every time it seems like uh, Kevin of Santa Cruz tries for that high crotch, duck under, uh, fireman's carry combination, it looks like Urbancic sees it coming and he's able to counter it effectively. And then Connor Urbancic is, is part of a long line of, of wrestlers in the Urbancic family. You know, Dan Urbancic, Nate Urbancic, all successful wrestlers in their own right. Connor took seventh at the Peninsula Varsity Tournament this year, sixth at the Weber Lawson. Uh, took second in the freshman sophomore tournament, so that's pretty interesting because compared to his own age group, he's looking pretty tough, but most of the tournaments he's gone to are varsity tournaments. Just beginning the second period, I mentioned periods being three minutes, they're two minutes long each period, each of Two to one. SLB's are with the narrow lead. He's got a he's got a navy ride, which is the hooking of that that ankle. It makes it very difficult for a wrestler to try and do a stand up escape or even to get any movement whatsoever. And a lot of wrestlers use that to frustrate the guy on the bottom. And it looks like right now Connor's doing a good job at that. He's got that arm across the back. It's what he's trying to do is grab that head and put pressure on him to take him hopefully over for some back points maybe even more does not look comfortable got that arm that's got to be yeah no kevin's had uh, better times for sure he's looking like he wants to hook that elbow and hit a roll and he does just that and he scores a two point reversal He's got a double wrist ride right now. Urbancic coming to his feet, looking for a stand-up. Chavez Vasquez has got to watch out. It looks like he was like kind of pushing him out there, and Urbancic was trying to get back into the action, but obviously it wasn't that blatant. Otherwise, the referee would have called something like that. See where condition is coming into effect here. Oh yeah, this I think this is actually going to be one of the tighter matches that we're going to see this evening, Rusty. These guys look pretty even. Uh, we don't, we're not seeing a, uh, a senior versus a freshman here. We've got two guys relatively close in age, Urbancic being a sophomore, Chavez Vasquez being a junior. Got a nice outside single right now. Chavez Vasquez from Santa Cruz keeping the wizard. He's got a front underhook now, trying to get those hips back, but he sees an opening with that ankle. Under 10 seconds to go in the 
out of bounds before he could swing around for his two. So that's uh, another big uh, match in that team battle between Santa Cruz and Aptos. Yeah, you can bet Aptos is Rudy Guzman right now and his coaching staff are really rooting for SLV in this situation, Rusty. Clock runs out on period number two. One to go. And, uh, you know, I can brag for you a little bit. We spoke about the nine-year streak of Aptos High School and uh, with you at the helm. None other than Reggie Roberts is the head coach before retirement. So uh, you really uh, put that program on the top of the mountain. Congrats for that. Well, I appreciate that. It was, uh it's some of the best years of my life and spent with some of the best people that you're ever going to meet, the parents and the wrestlers, um, outstanding people, every single one of them, very, very big support group there. And Rudy Guzman's doing a fantastic job this year, just keeping the ball rolling. And, uh, oh, a nice, nice movement there by Chavez Vasquez. It's been a, it's been a, tough transition year, honestly, Rusty, doing it for 28 years, but you know what? Um, can't stay out of it that long and, and look at next thing I know I'm I'm in the I'm in the booth with the legendary <laughs> Rusty Reed who would have ever guessed you met you mentioned conditioning earlier, Rusty, and then and this is really where it's going to kick in. Uh, you got a minute 22 left, and the guy who's been training the hardest is you guys probably going to have that little burst of energy at the end. Right now it's 3-3. Kind of a standing switch maneuver by Urbancic. Chavez Vasquez is wrestling not only for himself in this situation, really, really, you can tell he's, he's very uh, poised in this situation to try and help his team out. Didn't give up on that. So oh, he's put, put Urbancic in a very peculiar predicament. Urbancic then reverses him. Nice series of bad. Chavez Vasquez puts him on, on Urbancic on his back again. And here we go again! Urbancic still has him in a good position. Chavez Vasquez looks like he's trying to hang on here. We got a two point reversal, 6 5. He's one point short. He's got it. Santa Cruz coming up on top, but there's going to be a, a, a real serious discussion right now, Rusty, because as we saw, um, which we had the replay available, you saw a flurry of three different reversals, and the referee was throwing out points left and right, or maybe they weren't. Um, and right now, Ken is asking them, obviously, to check the score to make sure that score is accurate. Make sure that no points were missed. That was some kind of foul. That, that was the last 30 seconds. I've never seen so many rolling in. We had a nice reversal, put the guy in a, in a nasty predicament, and it looked like we were going to get a, either some near fall points or a pin, and the other guy just kept coming. Then he reversed uh, Urbancic. You know, Bansic reverse Chavez. <clears throat> and then at the very end, right now the scoreboard's showing six to five Chavez Vasquez. Both wrestlers still waiting patiently in the center. Yeah, it, a lot of sportsmanship right at the end of that major bout between the two. That was really fun to watch. What a great match. Congrats to both, Kevin Chavez Vasquez and Connor Vasquez. You know, I just uh, noticing something is sometimes you, being, being a former coach, you, you, you have a tendency to stare at other coaches and see what they're doing. And I just saw something out of Emiliano Aragon that was show that really showed uh, his a veteran presence right there. He was asking Chavez Vasquez to keep his headgear on while they're figuring out the score, just per, 
in case, just in case, let's say these, the score is tied and they have to go overtime, uh, Chavez Vasquez would be prepared to go instead of fooling around with his headgear. There's not too many coaches that would pay strict detail, uh, attention to detail like Coach Aragon just did. Still a lot of discussion over there at the scorer's table. We, while the referees were throwing uh, all those points, it's nearly impossible to try and... Yeah, it, it, it looked... You know, I don't honestly know how the score is six to five. To be honest with you, because we saw th three reversals in my in my mind. So that's two. Two. Each of those are two points, and both, at least two of those three reversals, someone was on their back. Uh, so you, you know, maybe momentarily, but there might have been a couple of a near fall points in there. Um, six five score seems a little low. From what we just saw. <laughs> whoever loses this, but one thing is, uh, you do know they're both going to CCS. In fact, why don't you explain that on the top? That is correct. The the top three wrestlers in each weight class earn the right to go to the Central Coast Section Championships, which is basically a qualifying tournament for the California State Wrestling Championships. One of the biggest wrestling tournaments, if not the biggest, in terms of numbers of competitors in the whole United States. I know Aptos, uh, as a team, ranked 17th in CCS out of the, uh, what, like about 50 schools? Uh, there's 135 schools in CCS wrestling. Wow. And, uh, and uh, so 17th, very impressive, top 20, which uh, is not a... Uh, strange place for, for the Aptos program to be there. All the no, actually, you're right, Rusty. Uh, Aptos uh, owns a very nice honor and distinction over the last decade. Only four of those 135 schools have actually been consistently ranked in the top 25. They are Gilroy, who has basically won the title for the last nearly two decades, 15 years, 16 years. Uh, Bellarmine Prep Academy and uh, Fremont High School and Aptos. So if you were to ask it, most people of those four teams, they'd probably guess the first three, but my hunch is Aptos probably wouldn't have been the fourth choice for a lot of people. Wow. Congratulations, Coach Reggie Roberts. Way to go. Hey. <laughs> well, they, they, they deserve all the credit. Boy, they're still sorting things out. So, uh, hey, with the score, the score jumped up. I, I, as we, we were correct. It was 5-6 at the end of the bout, and it now stands at 11-9 with uh, Kevin Chavez-Vasquez with the 11 points. So he still has the narrow lead and possibly the championship. <coughs> 138 pounds. And what we witnessed was the, uh, the best match of the night so far. Oh, without a doubt. Without a We're doubt. Not even halfway through the night, which is nice. Uh, 14 weight classes. It looks like two of them won't be competing. We already saw 106 pounds. Uh, we didn't have two finalists. And that's going to happen a little further down the road. So we'll have 12 matches tonight. Here we go. We got a winner. The decision is in. Great match. Both wrestlers gave every fan in this these. Uh, SLV Jim, their money's worth, that's for sure. We're going to see a battle here at 145 pounds. I happened to take in the match in the dual meet, and it came down to the final seconds. We've got Cooper Tate, a freshman out of Santa Cruz. He's 12 and 7 on the year here at 145 pounds, and he's taking on Luke Keyshaw, a junior. Coached by Rudy Guzman and Pete Maestas. He's 20 and 6 on the year, and he's ranked number 15th in CCS, and he beat Tate in the final seconds of their match in the dual meet this season. Tate, you can see the body, the body types here are drastically different. Tate, kind of a short, muscular build. Uh, uh, Keyshaw, long, lanky, very athletic and toned. And it looks like they got a Looks like there's an over overhook here on Keyshaw. Tate, one of those guys that just keeps coming forward, like a, a, li a little mini pit bull. Tate 
great of Santa Cruz and that familiar Santa Cruz singlet, gray and orange. It should be red, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It does look orange. It's, it's. I guess that would be considered cardinal red if, if, the, or if, if, if my fashion sense isn't disappearing. There it is again. Aptos versus Santa Cruz. Mono and for the team title. So we're two one right now. I, I, I believe. We are Santa Cruz with two victories. Nice, nice double leg shot there by Luke Kishaw. Tate tried to counter with some type of throw. Keyshaw anticipates that, ends up with two point takedown as they go out of bounds. Luke Keyshaw is a uh, outstanding athlete, by the way. Really, really uh, good baseball player as well. His brother, Jake Keyshaw, plays the uh, catcher for Cabrillo College and Bob Kittle's program over there. Uh, Jake was a former wrestler at Aptos a couple years ago, and Luke seems to be following in his brother's footsteps with baseball and wrestling. Luke was a finalist last year in the league championships. Uh, had a controversial loss of an early pin call. Um, took second place and it's really fired him up this season um, to try and take home the, the big prize here. High crotch shot there by Tate as the time runs out fought off by Keyshaw. We're still at 2-1, Rusty. And as you mentioned, Keyshaw of Aptos, uh, 15th in all of CCS. Uh, very few top 20 rankings in the tournament tonight, so uh, just goes to show you he's among the elite. Cooper Tate is in the bottom position for Santa Cruz. Luke Keyshaw is a pretty good rider, likes to sink legs, as you can see there. Right now he's looking a little bit for bring that other leg up. A lot of people on the East Coast where I'm from would call it a banana split. Um, it's a very painful maneuver. Cooper Tate, the champion of the Ed Farrell tournament. Four to five pounds. So he knows what it's like to wear the championship medal. Absolutely, and he took fifth at Jim Root as well as I'm noticing here. And Jim Root is a very, very tough tournament. Um, eighth at the Weber Lawson. So we got a, oh, a nice cradle rock back from there, out of bounds. Cooper Tate has been wrestling uh, in the middle school level. Obviously, you can tell but just by his style that he this is not his first year wrestling. Um, and to be able to come in as a freshman and be here in the league finals says a lot about his future. No. Keyshaw keeping both legs in control brings Tate back down to the mat, looking for that half Nelson. He's a lot keep of experience. Tate's wrestling with Keyshaw. Keyshaw Jr. His dad, uh, Luke, and Luke's dad. Carl was a former state place winner in Oklahoma. Wow. So you can tell that there's some wrestling genes in that family. It's an outstanding family, the Keyshaws. One of the most supportive families that Aptos has is mom, Jody. Oh, there's some back points right there. You had him in a nice cradle, there's two. We're up to four to one now. Keechall is leading four to one. He's he's riding tough, and we got a locking hands right there. So it's going to be a point coming back to Tate. Keechall locking his hands right there, as you probably saw that on the camera. I'm real impressed with this Cooper Tate. Only a freshman. Yeah, like I like, like I mentioned, he, he he looks like a like a mini pit bull to me. So when Keechall was in the finals of the SCCL last year, Tate was in junior high school. That's correct. Tate also uh, plays football and baseball um, along at uh, Santa Cruz High. And, and lo and behold, he also lists his hobbies as, believe it or not, Rusty, working out with weights. So right here, what you're gonna notice is that they're choosing a, what's called an optional freestyle start. Uh, Tate is going to allow Keyshaw to get one point of an escape 
in hopes of taking him down um, because he feels confident that he can take down Keyshaw on his feet. And that's not working out to his advantage right now as we've got a two-point takedown, it looks like. Oh, oh, referee signals out of bounds. Sometimes a coach will get a particular feeling about a wrestler on the bottom and they think that they have some sort of funky turn so they want their wrestler to have a better shot on their feet, stay away from a reversal. Um, maybe Coach Aragon, that's what he was feeling at that time. Oh, a nice headlock, and he's one foot too short right there, Rusty. Keyshaw comes in. He's a battler. He's definitely a battler. He's going to keep coming. He's not. He's not going to. He's not going to retreat from any challenge. We got it looks of possible blood. The referees, the officials, are doing a fantastic job tonight. Uh, if you'll notice that they're not wearing their typical attire of their gray referee shirts, uh, all of the referees are are wearing, and in symbolic. Uh, uh, honor of Pat Lovell, they're wearing the official Pat Lovell caric caricature t-shirt. Pat was a longtime official um, for over 50 years, Rusty, uh, and had re and refereed in, in, in several, uh, many, many years of uh, NCAA wrestling championships. He's a National Wrestling Hall of Fame member. Again, you mentioned earlier, he was on the 1964 Greco-Roman Olympic team. He was the athletic commissioner here, here in the Santa Cruz County for our almost 40 years. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we lost a great man. Uh, he was a hero to many, but more importantly than anything, uh, Pat was the real deal. What you see is what you get. Great sense of humor, and he cared about a, an awful lot of people. Nice double leg but there by Keyshaw, and he's got a half Nelson that's pretty deep. Couldn't secure it. Tate's too strong in that neck position. Another bump, half toss versus Santa Cruz. Three of them, one, well, if you count the, uh, the 106, but three have been taken by half toss and three by Santa Cruz. They're going right down to the wire, I think. This is probably not the last matchup we're going to see between these two schools. Uh, again, Santa Cruz right now has a, a lead for as far as the league title goes with their head-to-head -head matchup winning the tournament. In order for Aptos to win, become the overall league champions for the ninth out of ten, the past 10 years, Santa Cruz would have to finish in third in the tournament. That's not going to happen. So Santa Cruz High is most likely going to walk out of here as being the overall league champions for 2019, but that's not stopping Aptos from trying to hold on to its consecutive league tournament win streak, which is currently at nine years straight. Luke Keyshaw with the 7-2 uh, lead. Looks like he's going to win this match on points with only a second to go. Forcing that head down, and Luke Keyshaw is your 2019 league champion at 145 pounds. Got to feel good for Luke. Showing some great sportsmanship right there. That's the way it should be done. Show respect to your, to your opponent. Congratulations to Luke and his coaching staff, Rudy Guzman and Pete Maestas. I think we'll see Cooper Tate in the finals in the future. Um, yeah, maybe there three more times. So we got 152 pounds coming up. Ethan Robinson, also of Santa Cruz. Coached again by Emiliano Aragon, Cody Kiff, and Dan Whiting. And uh, Samuel Hugie. 
Hugh. That's Hugh Guy. Hugh Guy. Yeah. Thank you for the pronunciation uh -huh. of Soquel. Soquel with its first finalist, coached by Shane Torres and Angel Leon. Shane has uh, actually been a, a a coach for Soquel now for at least seven or eight years. If I'm not mistaken, I just I remember the days when Shane was actually wrestling in these finals himself. He's been a longtime successful MMA fighter. And if you take a look at his cauliflower ears, you'll uh, obviously see how many years he's been doing it. So the SoCal Knights finally make an appearance here in the finals with Sam Hugai. Only a sophomore. A takedown there by Hugh Guy with a nice double leg before they go out of bounds. Referee Nader Bansick making the call. Ethan Robinson, Rusty, he's only a freshman. He's nine and six. He took first at the Don Bosco tournament. And uh, Mr. Hugh Guy is eight and three, as you mentioned. Uh, no tournament placings from, from what I see. He jumped up in weight, so he's obviously put on some muscle going from 138 to 152. He looks a little stockier than he did last year. He's definitely got some size advantage over Ethan Robinson of Santa Cruz. Ethan's got some hobbies. He loves to BMX, right? Uh, BMX racing and uh, dirt biking, and he does some jujitsu on the side, it says. Absolutely. This, you guys got him on his back. He's got a Santa Cruz guy on his back. He's looking to secure the pin. They're moving towards the outer circle. And there's the fall right at the corner. Good job, Shane Torres. He's, uh, he's really done a fantastic job with that program. Um, I remember the days when they used to have five or six wrestlers, and this year I noticed that they're up around 20 to 25 wrestlers, so the SoCal Knights are, are making some progress uh, for sure. So we got 160 pounds. We got Douglas Hamum, um, again from SoCal, and he's a sophomore. He's in the navy blue singlet, taking on Tyler Slay, a league finalist last year. Coached by Rudy Guzman, Miguel Barranco, and Pete Maestas. Tyler Slay has had a very successful year. He's 23 and 12. He's currently ranked 12th in CCS. Took fifth in the Pat Lovell Memorial Tournament, which is about 80 schools in that tournament, Rusty, including three states. Uh, taking fifth in that tournament was huge, a huge step for Tyler's development, who's a senior. He's taken first at Don Bosco, fourth at El Camino, and he's taken sixth at Jim Root. So he's had a really successful season in his final campaign. You can tell Slay has that chicken wing in pretty deep, but he's trying to open it up, trying to get Heyman to, uh, to move in a position that he can capitalize, trying to stay behind him and stay in control. Not too much movement out of Heyman, but he's, he's, he's trying to take advantage of any, any crack in the wood here. Both out of bounds, still 2-0, 33 seconds left. Tyler Slay would like to say a big thank you to his dad, Chris Slay, for being there every step of the way, and I can definitely uh, attest to that. Chris Slay, Tyler's dad, is a fantastic uh, human being, great dad, very supportive of uh, both his son's <coughs> endeavors. 
And Tyler's come a long way here for Aftos Wrestling. Become a, a stalwart in the lineup the last two years. Tyler Slay of Aftos ranked 13th at 160 pounds in CCS. Uh, he's got that half opening up right there. That's what Tyler's been waiting for. He's got a wrist lock, half Nelson. He's trying to turn him over right here, and time runs out. And it doesn't look like he got any back points there. Choice goes to Sokel. Sokel chooses the bottom position, hoping to get an escape or a reversal and get on the board here. The second period starting. Two points scored in that first period, two to nothing. Two to nothing, we got uh, a nice reverse, reversal here. Not a reversal, but Hanum's trying to get a reversal here, trying to hook his leg, but it's a nice cross face there by Tyler. He's got a leg hooked in. What he's trying to do is he's trying to open up his hips a little bit, take him to his back. Just one point escape, but SoCal wrestler charges Tyler Slay. And it looks like he's going to, oh, he was in, thought he was trying to hit a spladel there for a second. Very rare strategy used by wrestlers. We got a lock up here. Two to one right now, slaying, slaying the lead. See in the corner of Aptos. Oh, it was a nice two-point takedown right there. It's keeping secure of that elbow, shoulder region. I think Tyler thinks that he, he can really turn him here, and he, and he is. Uh, just got to tighten up right there. All right, so Hannum got his hands raised down 4-1. Four 4-1 to one right now. Tyler Slays working tough on top. You can see in the corner Rudy Guzman. Coach, assistant coach Johnny Velez with a very sporty looking tie over there, Johnny. Nice hat, by the way. Uh, and I'm only a sophomore against the uh, very experienced and talented Tyler Sled. But with him, four to one. And hips are up, and Hannum coming out the back door. There's two near fall for Slay. Hannum trying to get a one point escape here. He hasn't been able to break free yet. And out of bounds they go. Hannum's coached again by Shane Torres, Angel Leon, and McKenna Mitchell. He's also on the football team and track team at SoCal High School. Great football field. Great. They're, they're, their facilities, uh, they're really doing a nice job over there. It looks like the things are really coming up in terms of their, their fields and uh, that, that they use. I know the football field is used by the soccer team and lacrosse team. And it's just a nice, nice area. Blue Ball Park right next to it. Yep. Hannum's in danger of locking his hands, it looks like, there for a second. Trying to... Trying to cradle up Slay here in the third period. 6-1, Slay up top. Slay trying to get his hips out. <clears throat> trying to maintain some hand control. Slay in the red shoes with the lead, 6-1. A lot of people don't realize that, that Tyler Slay is also a nationally ranked um, racer, like a car racer. Um, he goes to national tournaments, all those little, those little box cars that they race. I don't know the official title uh, uh, of it, but I, I, I've known Tyler doing that activity for a long time, and he competes in national tournaments all the time. Hey, there's a two-point takedown for Tyler at, towards the edge of the mat. It shows up 9-1, to one, a minute to go in the third period. Aptos really... Really looking for a pin here at this point, trying to gain that extra point or two <clears throat> to close that gap with Santa Cruz. Um, 
at this point you're gaining a certain amount of points for first place, a certain amount of points for second place, and but you get that pin, you get a couple bonus points here. That might might help the team chase. And he's looking like he's gonna do it. There's 23 seconds, there's a lot of time left if Tyler can settle here. Stepping over, he's still got the wrist behind the back. He's trying to sink the legs and Hannum fighting with everything he's got to get off his back. We got another three near fall there. Five seconds to go in the period. So it's like a Tyler Slay victory. Time Mi runs out on the sophomore Douglas Hannum. Impressive being in the league final. But unfortunately at 160 pounds coming up against Tyler Slay. That's a, that's a. Not, nothing to be ashamed there. Major decision for Tyler Slay when uh, Tyler probably thought he was probably going to get a pin. Mr. Hannum, a lot less experienced than Tyler. Uh, got nothing to hang his head, out, head on there. And coming up, 170 pounds. We've got Kalen Swan of SLV, a junior. He'll be in the red and black. Uh, Cougars, that's what it is. Then I, I said zebra earlier. I know that my my friend Ken Palestrini would take offense to that, since they are the Cougars, they're not the zebras, Rusty. Uh, yeah, especially since we're in their house. Yeah. Yeah, I may I may have to get out of town quick here. Uh, Lucas Dara from Harbor making their first appearance tonight in the finals. Coached by a brand new coach here at Harbor High, Jay Reyes and Mike Lebu. Um, Lucas Dara is two and three on a year. He's a senior. And right now he's uh, falling victim to a double chicken wing, which you rarely see in wrestling anymore. Used to be a very popular move back in the 60s, 70s, even 50s. You just don't see a double chicken wing anymore. It's going retro. Yeah. Swan of SLV, also in the top 20 rankings of CCS at 17. So he's had a good year. He's had a great year. Yep, he's got a 17 and 7 record. Again, Kalen Swan is coached by uh, longtime coach Ken Palestrini, who actually used to be a, an assistant coach for Santa Cruz many, many moons ago. Sorry, Ken, but it was many moons ago that you were at Santa Cruz. Um, Kalen Miller, uh, Colin Miller, sorry, assistant coach, and Danny Urbansic, and, and Brett Swan rounding out the coaching staff. Harbor, one and only so far up to now, Harbor represented in the finals. So we got apple cider, Swan took fifth, took sixth in Weber Lawson, and first in Don Bosco. Um, I'm sure the fact that Lucas Dara is here in the finals for Harbor, that he's just darn glad to be here. Wow. There's a couple nice moves. Dara Sr., Swan of Junior. Hey, there goes that double chicken wing again, Rusty. And he's trying to turn Dara over here with about five seconds left. Not going to be able to do it. Not on Mr. Dara's watch in the first two periods here. Swan choosing the neutral position. Harbor wrestler deferred to SLV. And we got two minutes about to begin again. Second period, 4 nothing. Swan of SLV. want to thank all the fans for coming out tonight. Um, <clears throat> this really is like the, oh, nice takedown by Dara. Coming right, right back with a strong takedown. Scoring two points. It looked like he had him in a cradle momentarily, and Swan's trying to get out. His head's, oh, his head's high right now. Swan is trying to grab that head. There he goes with a two-point reversal. Swan with the lead, two. Second period, about halfway He's got a pretty deep half right now. Very deep half, Nelson. He's in good position. Plenty of time left on the clock, and there you go.
2019 SCCL League Champion, Kaylin Swan. Yeah, that's unfortunate, Rusty. Marcos Reyes, who became the all-time leading running back uh, in Aptos High history this year, um, <clears throat> is going to accept a forfeit. There is nobody in the 182-pound weight class in this tournament. And if you look at Marcos's resume, um, I'm sure some of the other wrestlers moved either down or up a weight class away from Mr. Reyes. He came in to today's tournament, ranked fourth in the CCS, and has taken second in Jim Root, second in El Camino, and second in Overfelt. And right now he's being looked at by many football colleges or around the country. All state running back, and in the finals the last two years. This was his third straight year in the finals. Finally a new champion, he came in second the last two years. So this is uh, up the race, first league championship. And an easy one. But Here. now we move on. Here we go at 195 pounds. This is a rematch from a couple of weeks ago in their dual mate. Uh, Juan Rosales, and a junior from Santa Cruz, is taking on James Superfly Platero, <coughs> um, who is 10 and 6 on the year, and he's ranked 15th in CCS. Uh, Rosales is 7 and 4, took third in the Don Bosco tournament, fifth in the Weber Lawson tournament. Um, Platero comes in and took fifth at El Camino. He, James Platero wearing the black, <coughs> and Rosales. Again, in the, the cardinal orange, as Rusty says. <laughs> James has him on a nice lock from behind. He's got a two-point takedown, and it looked like referee Nate Urbancic tried to see if he was locking hands on the mat. And uh, Superfly was just too sneaky at the time. Oh! He ran right into a headlock. But Platero doesn't stay there. He's coming out the back door, it seems. He's trying to get that head free, and but just can't get out. So we've got a two-point takedown. He, James kind of rushed right into a flying headlock there. It's the mat made a huge sound that you would have made Vince McMahon proud. Yeah, we've uh, definitely moved into the big boy category. One point escape for Platero. Narrows the score to four to three with 10 seconds left in the first period. Yeah, it was a, a the choice goes to Platero who defers and then Rosales looks like he's heading down into the southern position. Rosales, like, not unlike any other teenager in this world these days, Rusty, is a big, avid video game player. Um, and he also plays football for the Cardinals of Santa Cruz High School. One, one point escape by Rosales. Scores now five to three <clears throat> in favor of the Husky guy in the Cardinal Orange. Sorry, Emiliano, I'm, uh, I don't have my regular seeing glasses on tonight. It, I have to agree with Rusty, it looks more orange than, than red. I'm sure you'll give me a text message later on correcting me. Here they go, it looks like Greco-Roman wrestling as these two guys go at it, upright. Very, very happy about that style. Yes, Pat would be giving him tips as uh, he'd be sitting here calling the action. Minute to go, second period. Otero with a narrow five lead. James was a, a finalist last year in the league championships. Really, really came on strong at the end of the year for the Aptos Mariners. It became a, a real staple in the lineup. Everybody on the team, very popular guy for his personality, great sense of humor, just a likable, personable individual. The Superfly, because he used to have long, curly hair like Jimmy Superfly Snooker, 
a professional wrestler from the 70s and 80s. <coughs> Ooh, oh, nearside cradle there by Platero, but can't lock it up. Turns into two for Rosales, maybe. Platero, yep. Got to come out the back door again. Couldn't hold it. Brings the score to seven to three. <clears throat> James Platero, again, it's 10 and six on the year. Um, he's a collector of, hmm. I'm not quite sure what this, what this says, or even if it's appropriate for the year, but he collects them. Uh, he is also a big fan of Hardcore Halo, and I'm guessing that's a video game again. 7-4, uh, again, Santa Cruz winning as we head into the third period. Rosales with a three-point lead over Platero of Aptos. There's a one-point escape, it should be. Which, uh, this could be a growing upset. These guys have a similar body structure. He's got a caution for stalling on the Santa Cruz wrestler Rosales just backing up. Obviously, James is putting pressure on him right now. He's known for that style of trying to keep after you and keep after you. He's only a takedown away, and we've got plenty of time left on the clock. It's 126. He stops the shot from Rosales, comes around to the near side. He's got to look, try to get a near side cradle, but he gets stuck on his knees. Now he gets behind him somehow, but if he's going out of bounds, then he's got to keep going. And ow! Oh! A two point takedown called at the edge of the mat by referee Nathan Urbancic. I think Johnny Velez, assistant coach, wants to question that call a bit. Obviously, Johnny's person now, he's not going to argue. Assistant coach Pete Maestas remaining calm in the corner. Uh, Nine five. Nine five. Rosales. Again, Platero coached by Rudy Guzman in his first year as head coach of Aptos, but he was an assistant coach for 16 years. Uh, Pete Maestas, Ramon Zacharias, longtime assistant coach, Johnny Velez, and Miguel Barranco. We got two. For Platero, and that brings the score to nine to eight, Rusty. 51 seconds, we got plenty of time. Platero signaling that he's going to allow Rosales to get one point for a freebie. And he's gonna take his chances on his feet here. James trying to get to the outside and here comes the, he's got to lock that elbow up. He continues to attack Rosales. You can see the whole Aptos contingent pretty much over in that corner cheering on the Superfly right now. 24 seconds left, he's a takedown. He needs a takedown right now. Rosales gets a two-point takedown, and he's getting back points. And that's gonna do it. It looks like Santa Cruz is taking down Aptos here. James Platero coming up short, just short, but with a gallant effort. And Juan Rosales is your 2019 at CCL. League champion, great job by both guys. Lots of action from the start to finish. Coming up at 220 for Harbor, longtime veteran wrestler Danny Cruz. Danny's been in his share of uh, finals before. Outstanding wrestler. For, formerly placed at the Pat level Classic last season, which again, that's a very tough tournament. Danny's routinely been ranked in the top 20 in CCS over the last couple of years, but I'm not seeing a ranking right now for him. 
He's seven and three on the year, which seems to me like a low number of matches for a guy like Danny Cruz's caliber. Perhaps he was nursing an injury at the start of the season. He's a senior, coached by first year head coach Jay Reyes and Mike Labou. Daniel Felix on the mat, duking it out with him at Harbor High School. Junior. The Taco King Felix. <laughs> Just noticed that. Daniel, the Taco King Felix. Record of 11 and 3. That's pretty high for a Santa Cruz guy to be ranked in the top 14, top 15, top 20. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. Again, a true reflection of the job that Coach Aragon's been <coughs> doing with that program. Daniel Felix uh, took first place at the Jim Root Tournament. Rusty uh, was the champion at 220. He also plays fourth at the El Camino Tournament and also the Co Colt Classic Tournament, which is up in El Camino, up in the Bay Area. No points scored yet. Only 20 seconds to go in the first period. There we go. Nice takedown there by Danny Cruz. He's a well-schooled wrestler. He's had several coaches over the last few years, Mr. Cruz has, and he's had formerly uh, Steven Batisto, who's coaching down in Bakersville area right now. Um, <clears throat> brother of Brian Batisto, former league uh, champion and CCS champion who's wrestling at Cal State Bakersfield. He's also been coached uh, by a number of years by Greg Lopez, longtime Harbor coach. A lot of talent on the mat with this one. Danny Cruz of Santa Cruz and Daniel Felix of Harbor. And Cruz, as you mentioned, so many league championships, but yet it's uh, Felix who has the higher rank in CCS. Well, yeah, he's, he seems to be the more busier guy right now. And that's that's the only thing I can guess at is that maybe Danny has been injured uh, this season. But at least he's here. He's a senior. He's getting a, a shot at. Nice throw by. Trying to hit that. Uh, ooh. Out of bounds. No, no points scored. Danny Cruz got a nice elbow throw by. Just couldn't capitalize there. 220 pounders going at it. It's the second to last match of the night. Heavyweights on deck. But for now, Felix and Cruz. Cruz with the two point lead, two to nothing. Danny Cruz of Santa Cruz. You know, it's it's uh, interesting that this is this is a, probably one of the tougher weight classes in, in this tournament. <clears throat> These two guys have have obviously earned their spot in the finals. But I'm looking across the mat, and there's a guy, big guy over there for the SoCal jacket named Cody Bryan, who's um, been in the league finals for at least three years that I know of. And he's watching right now. So one of these two guys had to beat Cody Bryant to get here. And that was uh, quite an achievement in itself, considering that Cody Bryant is, is considered one of the, probably one of the top 20 wrestlers in CCS. So he's number eight in CCS. There you go. Cody Bryant's number eight. And he was obviously upset by one of these two gentlemen. The good thing is that the league's taking three guys to the tournament, so all three of these guys could probably be facing each other at one time or another in the sectional tournament next week, which is held at Independence High School. The action's kicking off on Friday, continuing in on Saturday, and this year they'll be hosting the girls' CCS and the guys' CCS all under one roof. Well, now we've got some points on the board, six to two. Danny Cruz with the nod. Danny Cruz, 6-2. Trying to put Harbor on the ball. Oh, it looked like he was trying to hit a throw there, but Danny, Danny Felix is kind of a, a tall customer. He had, the, had some length, length there of, uh, in his legs to be able to reach out and balance himself. Neutral position here to begin the third period. 6-2, Danny Cruz still in the, in the lead.
both guys locking up. Now, one thing that I've always known about Danny Cruz, they're both Dannys, actually, I think that's where we keep getting confused a little bit. It's Danny Cruz of Harbor and Danny Felix of Santa Cruz. <laughs> there's Cruz's and there's Danny's. We got them both. Uh, one of the things that I respect about Danny Cruz of Harbor is his, his style. It's, it's keep coming forward. He's got a good position. He's uh, keeps a good. He's a good hand fighter. Keeps working to improve his position. He's always been tough on his feet. Very hard to take down. He's got a low center of gravity, and uh, he's a smart wrestler. But Danny Felix. Looks like he's got some physical skills himself. And uh, he's only a junior, which means he's only going to get better next year. 7 3, 24 seconds left. Both guys not giving an inch to the other. The officials doing a great job tonight. Want to thank them for being here. Want to also say thank you to the CTV camera crew. They're working. Working hard here on a Friday night here in San Lorenzo Valley High School. And there's a reversal throw by Danny Cruz, but feet were out of bounds or he ran out of time at the same time. There you go. Your 2019 SCCAL League Champion from Harbor, Danny Cruz. Hey. Rusty, we're, we're about to see the big boys. Final match of the evening, folks. 14 weight classes coming to a close right here. 286 is the weight limit. Actually, with the two-pound allowance that they get in January, it's now up to 288. We've got, uh, looks like John Garcia Gonzalez of Soquel. He's in the shorts combination. Uh, Isaac, my bad. Isaac Garcia Gonzalez of SoCal. He's a freshman, and he's on his back right now, and we've got a pin. That didn't take long by Benjamin Williams. Benjamin had a pretty good year. He uh, took third place at Don Bosco and seventh at Jim Root. And um, uh, interesting enough, uh, one of Ben's hobbies, Rusty, we, we should say this, is, is sarcasm. No. <laughs> what a way to end the evening. That, uh, Benjamin Williams, God, we hardly had a chance to talk about either of them. Isaac Garcia Gonzalez in the heavyweight <coughs> Also plays football, but uh, making the finals as a freshman, a quick loss, but you know he'll probably be back, no doubt about that. And then the senior, Benjamin Williams, the uh, champion in the heavyweight division out of Santa Cruz High School. So, that time, won six of the matches. Six individual champions. It's a good number to have. Santa Cruz won five individual championships. One title for SLB, one for Harbor, one for SoCal. So the rest of the league piped in a little bit. All right, let's go. Let's give a rundown. We'll uh, tell you who our league champions are. Alex Zacharias, uh, forfeiture. Aptos High School, we won at 106. So, uh, League champ at that weight. Russell Palms of Santa Cruz, the winner at 113 pounds. Eli Galster with a pin at 120 pounds of Apt Apt Aptos High School, Eli Galster. Uh, with the pin, won the league title at 120. Also with the pin, Bobby Deer of Santa Cruz, the champion at 126 pounds. At 132 pounds, it was Christian Montoya of Aptos with the pin, and in that wild, wild 
match uh, the wildest of the night, I think, at 138 pounds, was Kevin Chavez Vasquez from Santa Cruz. That was a wild match. At 145, it was Luke Keyshaw that top. Sam, I'm pretty sure everybody wants to get out of here pretty quick, so get everybody up in the stands. Please get up in the stands. Everybody up in the stands, please. This guy out of SoCal High School. Tyler Slay of Aptos, the winner at 160 pounds. At 170, it was Kalen Swan. Ken Swan out of St. Lorenzo Valley High School. So a favorite here at the home, home gym at the Cougars. At 182 with the forfeiture was Marco Reyes of Aptos, the league champ. Uh, Juan Rosales at 195, the champ from Santa Cruz. Danny Cruz at 220, champion at Harbor. And then the heavyweight, it was Benjamin Williams from Santa Cruz High School. So uh, we'll have to wrap it up here right quick, but uh, quick, your thoughts? My hunch is that even with the six champions, the fact that Santa Cruz had five is that Santa Aptos probably couldn't close the gap enough to win the league tournament. Um, we're going to see a new league champion this year. We're going to see Santa Cruz High School become the first league champions um, that they've had in, in about 10 years. And uh, congratulations to Coach Emiliano Aragon and, and his group of fighting Cardinals slash Orange. <laughs> well, that's great. Congratulations to the Santa Cruz Cardinals. And uh, so that's going to do it for us. I appreciate you sitting at the table. Having a My pleasure. Roberts along and out of the coaching booth and into the announcers booth. So My pleasure. I'm, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Rusty. And uh, you know, again, uh, 